And as we do each Wednesday at 40 past the hour, folks, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report right under the newsletter tab. You'll see it there. You can subscribe for $97 a month, folks. Comes out every Monday. Updates throughout the week when warranted. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And boy, there's so much going on in terms of Forex yields, driving the dollar, driving commodities. And we got some action. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Um, boy, amazing the moves we've had since a week ago on Wednesday. Yields back about 4%, man. The whole conversation seems like it shifted a bit. Um, pretty remarkable. We talked to you last week before the Fed had even spoken. When you think about how things reverberate on a weekly basis, um, where do you want to kick things off, man? Quite a week since we talked to you seven days ago. Yeah, well, we had a nice reaction. You know, I think pretty much what we talked about last week, we prepared ourselves quite well for that. Um, so we we rode that kind of wave pretty nice, I think, going into the end of the week last week. So, And I like to speak that's kind of coming out. It's starting to hit the tone, like I've been saying, for over a month and a half, that the media is getting way too ahead of, ahead of itself as far as when a rate cut is going to come in. And also, if three quarters is all they're going to cut over the course of a year or whatever it is, uh, the market's already factored in how much of that, you know, which we've been talking about for a long time. So this limbo period with rates, I think, is going to be something we have to live with for a while, you know, especially over the next couple of months. Um, there's still some numbers you have to watch out when it comes to the FX markets. Like this week, there's nothing for the dollar coming out anymore, really, except for unemployment claims tomorrow, which the way interest rates reacted on Friday, that was, I mean, look at how they, they acted off the Fed and then unemployment's what really set yields off, you know, because they don't like this with the, uh, you know, wage growth and uh, job growth and stuff like that. So if unemployment sure. claims come out shorter, you know, if they start to keep tracking in that direction, like it seems like that's going to be that way. Um, I'd be careful to watch the uh, the interest rates catching a bid, you know, as far as um, in pricing going up. Granted, we have the auctions the next couple of days. So you can expect some kind of goofy volatility, especially in the afternoons. Um, so I'd be careful with that. You know, if I was just on the bond futures and 10 year futures, if you're trading those, I'd be very cautious the next couple of days. You know, I'd probably wait it out until after Thursday's number because um, just you're going to probably get some erroneous spikes, if anything, off the auction. You know, I don't think you're sure. going to get a solid trend, you know, because if anything, what's the auction going to do? Do you think the auction is going to start a trend? No, it's not going to do that. It's just going to set the algos on fire. It's going to be a matter of how much how much liquidity comes in, how much buying really want, is, interest is there going to be, you know. So and I wouldn't want to try and play that game. Uh, right now, I think that you're having – you hit a nice low in the dollar a couple days ago. Um, you know, we had, we had downside targets for the euro US dollar and the pound and some other currencies and those hit nice areas just like the dollar index did you know as far as the upside you know so I think that we, we're coming off a nice correction zone and I think that over the next couple of days into next week you'll probably see dollar under pressure but I wouldn't get overzealous with anything when it comes to as far as how much the dollar is going to move I would just be right now sell rallies in the dollar right now buy buy dips in the other currencies you know i could see you know the euro us dollar and the pound dollar getting a nice little lift um the yen you know they had a nice outside day yesterday but all that's doing is targeting them back into the center of the range they've been in for the last month so do i see the yen us dollar yen going down yeah, on an intraday basis, probably into friday um but i would use cautious uh, caution i don't think you're going to get a big move Nice. That was a nice little wrap up, man. I was jumping through some of those charts as you were doing it. And yeah, um, you know, pretty cool to see some of those inflection points. And you've had some great calls, man, um, as things have played out. And I wanted to ask you about kind of one of the points you made in terms of some of those rates, of course, already into the market. We got the 10 year at about 4.1 today. We we're as low as almost 3.8 last week, a little bit of a reverberation. And one of the things you had Kashkari out here saying today is that we might be in a period of, you know, higher for longer. Um, going forward to some degree, and I found myself saying, well, if we're higher for longer and we're sitting at 4.1 right now, where does that 10 end up at some degree? Do you have any thoughts on that? Or, and it kind of speaks to what you were talking about, but I was just wondering how you take something like that, how you think about it, and then you look, you mentioned you know, the 10-year, the futures, et cetera, going out even a little bit longer than maybe a couple days. Where do you, where do you try and think about that one as we go out maybe you know, months, as we do start getting some of those cuts? Because you make the great point, man, if there's only three cuts, and the Fed's at 5.5 right now, and the 10 years at 4.1. 
there's a lot of that already factored in. And, and so are we going to be around 4% on the 10-year? Do you think about that? How's your brain think about that one? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think I, I heard you talking earlier, and that does go in line with what I think. And remember last week, I was also telling you how the short terms are really driving the uh, the yields right now. And, yes. and that's kind of where we're at. The 30-year obviously holds rates in the long term. And with this, where we're at, we know that, okay, even if they were just, let's say, hike, they're not doing more than a quarter point. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, let's say all of a sudden inflation starts to kick up and then they would be on, yeah. okay, we're going to do a quarter, we're going to pause and we're going to probably lean towards cutting again. You know, so we know that the hawkishness is, is pretty much off the table, but not gone, you know, but also as far as dovishness, how much do you get? I mean, three quarters of a point over the course of a year. Remember when they first started raising interest rates? I mean, they did over a point and a half in, in, in how short of a time, you know, let alone yeah. a half a point or a point, you know? So now you're looking at 12 months for three quarters of a point, which the, like, the market's already factored in. So I think that the, the short terms, like the two, the five and the 10 are gonna still push that, that boundary, especially the tenure, like you said, into that area. I like that as a, as a target range for sure. But once you get to that area, I'd be careful because that's when you're going to see the swing where the, the, the third year is going to catch up with the short terms and start to push highs. And when that starts to get stretchy and starts really spiking, the, the short terms are not going to spike anymore because they're done. And once those start to turn, because the short terms obviously drive rates in the short term, long term overall, you know, so that for the trend first shifts with the short terms. You know, the only time it shifts with the long term first is when you have major monumental events, you know, like. If, if all of a sudden we go to like the U.S. troops go into war, like with Taiwan, I would think that the 30 year is going to catch a bid, at least in the short run. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on in the economy. You know what I mean? So that would be a situation where the 30 year would override the short runs, you know, um, because yeah. that's just flight to quality. It's just what you do is sure. how things can happen, you know. But, yeah, I like what you're saying. And, and I think that that's the tone people really need to keep in perspective is. Don't expect much out of the interest rate market. It's pretty much done. I mean, we know that as far as rate going up, that's that's over. Going down, there's not much to go. You know. Right. So right. Um, now, unless we have something where, let's say, all of a sudden unemployment skyrocks. Like, let's say we go all of a sudden to six percent unemployment and have a huge deflationary environment that somehow just. I don't know, comes out of nowhere. Maybe sure. Santa Claus all of a sudden drops off all this stuff at every Walmart or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know what concern oh, you can use. We all but know these it, things come out of nowhere these days for sure. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Right. But but let's say that does occur. Okay. Then you're looking at that situation where you could see a big easing bit bias. But, you know, I, like I said, I, I can't I can't go far into fan. I have to go into fantasy land to try and find those, you know, those opinions and objectives, you know. So I, that's, I just yeah. don't want to throw those out there. I mean, anything can happen we know that you know you're more likely going to have an algo spike that happens because of an error in technology to get to those levels for a brief time than you are because of a trend i think you know i appreciate the take man it makes a lot of sense it does uh can you hang with us for the break maybe we'll talk a little bit of crude if we can to finish it up uh, uh, after I the could, break I all could right do, i could do one last segment yes sir okay perfect we'll be right back folks we'll talk a little bit of crude we'll finish up with our man teddy kegstat we'll be right back we got markets in positive territory right near all-time highs stay tuned with us teddy and i will be right back folks Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 18 points, trading at 49.92. We almost made it to 5,000. We're back a bit. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We're talking a little bit of Forex. And I wanted to get your take on crude, Teddy. Quite the pullback, of course, last week uh, to this Monday, $71. We had been talking about maybe the high, some great action there in our conversation. We're back to $73 and change. What do you think about that crude market? Uh, you know, we can definitely talk about crude, especially the Tiger Forex report readers. You know, we had that sell signal a couple of weeks ago that, you know, played into our hand into Friday's low. We got the little um, test of it on uh, Monday. We peaked a little bit lower, a couple ticks and then reverse and had basically an unchanged day. That was a nice little high probable cat Japanese candlestick turning point, meaning that um, probably that swing low is pretty solid for at least a few sessions, I would think. I would watch out. Now, today is critical. If, let's say we close where we're at right now. That would give us a nice little positive bounce off of, uh, of, of Monday's low. If we reverse gears tomorrow and sell off in the crude market, I would be very cautious that we could probably take out the lows from this week. That means that we're going to probably get bearish and try and get back down towards that probably 70 to 68 area. Now, 
in the opposite, if we hold up today, like let's say we settle where we're at today and then all of a sudden we catch a rally and settle definitely positive tomorrow. Well, then we're in the heart of the range we've been in for the past couple of months. It's going to be, you know, a 70, you know, five dollar treading around there poking around 76 77 back to 75 you know you really have to take out that high from a couple of weeks ago at around 79 i think it was around 79 78 half you know sure. if you do that then i can see it's going up to that 81 to 84 dollar range but the oil markets seem pretty tame i mean geopolitical stuff hasn't seemed to shake the boat too much it's helping them hold us in a range um i just don't see us to have any really big bullish reason to take off right now now especially with yields if yields also keep on retracting if they keep at least sideways to lower um then it's going to be hard for crude to catch a bid too because if the dollar's under pressure and yields are under pressure cost of carry goes down for crude that helps to suppress prices you know and also demand uh, level changes as well so i think that we're we're stuck in a wide range trade i'd be cautious watch those levels we take out the low from monday look out below and if we hit get a positive close today and especially tomorrow we could you know push a bit we gotta run teddy i 